except for <laughs> except for pressing a button. Okay. Okay. Should we get started, Francesca, or do we need to wait for any other technical things? No, that's fine. Please go Perfect. ahead. Perfect. Okay, so welcome everybody and um, also to those who are still coming in. So um, we're really um, glad to have you um, to this really international session on the PIT Forum. Uh, my name is Ricarda Brockmann, I work at Dunt and I've been a lead of the Work Package 5 um, uh, of Freya, the Communication and Engagement Work Package for, of this last year, following up my colleague uh, Michael de Jung, who has been working on this before. And today I also have um, uh, Todd Carpenter and Alice Meadows from NISO here with me, because they will be taking over the PIT Forum at the end of Freya. So this is going to be a really exciting session, I hope, where we look into um, what we've done in Freya, establishing the PIT Forum, um, how we set it up, what is what it was meant to be, and then um, Todd and Alice are going to look into the future and how we are planning to sustain it after Freya and what the possibilities will be for the PIT Forum um, sort of coming up. So I think it's going to be a really nice session and we also have some um, ways of you guys to contribute. So um, yeah, I'm really excited about this. So um, yeah, as I just mentioned, this session um, has sort of three parts. So first, I will give a brief introduction and history on uh, what I now call Pit Forum 1.0. So basically the, the birth of the Pit Forum, um, pitforum.org, and um, how we set it up in the Freya project. And then Todd and Alice are going to talk about Pit Forum 2.0 and give a look into the future. And then after that, there is uh, room for discussion uh, with all of you. So this is going to be a really hopefully interactive session. And as always, we are recording this. Um, you can put questions in the chat, um, but also feel free to raise your hand and just ask anything if you if you have questions in between. So uh, the PIT Forum um, is one of the pillars of the Freya project. And um, for those of you who don't know, so Freya is a European project that um, started three years ago and is ending this month. And it has worked on um, the persistent identifier infrastructure for um, the scholarly communication world, and in particular also in relation to the European Open Science Cloud. So we're one of the uh, European projects kind of building um, the fundamentals of the, the EOSC and particularly focusing on PITs. And the Freya project had three uh, pillars, the PIT graph, which um, we have had some sessions today and yesterday on, uh, where we really developed services for PITs and connecting different PIT systems together in order to query um, the information that is stored in these PITs. Um, so that is what we're doing in the PIT graph, so really um, building, building services. Um, then we have the PIT Commons, which is about sustainability and um, sort of consolidating everything that we've developed in the project and with, within the, the PIT services and the PIT graph. And then uh, lastly, what uh, today's session is about is the PIT Forum. And the PIT Forum was our way of engaging with the community and making sure that whatever we developed in the, in the project uh, would be sort of in alignment with the, with the broader community. And um, so it's, it was our place for community engagement, co-design of PIT services, and also for us to um, have a place for outreach and adoption um, of everything we've developed in the Freya project together with the various partners. Um, and what we, what we noticed is that we were in need of having a sort of more concrete place for this to happen. So what we did is we established pitforum.org, um, which we now call the Pit Forum, um, for exchange and online interaction. And the idea of pitforum.org is that it would be a global discussion platform for all things Pit related. So really anybody who is interested in persistent identifiers could go there to find information and exchange and, and guidance and discussion. Um, and we launched it at Peter Palooza in 2019. In the beginning of 2019, you can find the, um, the presentation back on this DOI. So these, these slides will be shared also as well with you. So you can have a look later. And um, the pitforum.org is run on a discourse platform and we have 15 moderators from various organizations, including um, pit providers like DataSite, Crossref and ORCID, 
um, but also a lot of the Freya partners that were involved in the project, including myself from Dance and, and others. Um, and the Pit Forum is, is a, so it's an online uh, platform and it, it is um, sort of structured along different topics. And we, um, we set it up um, starting out with a couple of general topics, for instance, following uh, what I've just mentioned, the pit craft, uh, also information on pit, pit prospectuses and uh, spaces to share uh, news on events. Also Pitapalooza was a section um, because we also, this platform allows for people to have their own groups for discussion. So the Pitapalooza organizers were able to use it for that as well. We had some space for our Frey ambassadors. And over time, this really grew out and people were adding new sections and we were sort of looking into um, what the community needed, for instance, also adding new things and different languages and restructuring and everything a bit. So, but in general, there's lots of different topics that you can find information on um, events. And one thing I wanted to highlight in particular is the, the knowledge hub of the Pit Forum. And this is um, something that we've developed in Freya as well. My colleague Francis Madden from the British Library and other colleagues have a work have been working on training materials for pits, and we've been storing these and making these available in this knowledge hub that is part of the pit forum. So um, this is what the knowledge hub looks like. So you have um, information getting started with pits. So really. Um, guides for um, choosing persistent identifiers, for instance, that we have been developing, but also um, sort of low key information on, on background on pits, like a, a video we've been creating in Freya, just showcasing what, what, the, what you can do with pits. And then you have information for different um, stakeholder groups, like librarians, funders, developers, publishers, researchers. And we also have a, a, a whole section on uh, sort of resources in different languages uh, where our ambassadors and others have helped, helped enormously to translate some of the materials to make it more available. So this is, um, yeah, this is some of the things that we have um, been creating and storing in this online pitforum.org over the past three years. And uh, what we realized is that there was really a need for this, which is nice because you never know when you start something like that, if it actually gains traction. Um, but it turns out to be really a place for global pit enthusiasts. It now has uh, more than 520 members. I think yesterday was 522. Who knows, maybe we got some recent numbers even now. And uh, I've put a little graph in there so you can see that really from the start when we launched it, it has been steadily growing um, in terms of numbers. So I think this shows that there's really a, a need for it and that more and more people are interested in, in sort of using it as a platform for exchange. Um, as I mentioned, it hosts the Knowledge Hub and PIT training materials. It also was a space for the Pitapalooza organizers, um, which is one of the most important conferences, I would say, for PITs um, hosted each year. Um, it was used also for the consul uh, consultation for the EOS PIT policy. So um, sort of the policymakers working on the, on the EOS uh, were using this to um, get in touch with the broader pit community to cons consult um, and really many, many more things. So we realized um, that this, this needed to be sustained. And of course we wanted this from the start of the project, but we didn't know whether the community was interested in, in sustaining this. Um, so all of this led, led us to um, send out a call for hosting the pit forum after the, the end of the Freya project because it was established um, from funds of the project and we needed to make sure that there's an organization who can um, take over the lead of the forum and make sure that it remains the space for the, for the broader community. So we had this, um, this call asking people basically to um, provide us with their interest for the forum for hosting it. And then we had six organizations who replied and the moderators, um, um, that the pit forum moderators together um, looked at all of these organizations and they decided that NISO uh, was uh, a good candidate to actually take over the pit forum um, after Freya and continue what we've started, uh, making this a place for the broader pit community. So um, yeah, this has been decided uh, relatively recently. So this is, I think, the first moment for us to um, kind of together look into this and there will be lots of news from our sites um, 
in the future as well, telling you a little bit more of how, how this is going to go. But I'm already really excited that um, Todd and Alice are here with us today as well, and they can uh, they will tell you more about the plans for the pit forum uh, from the perspective of NISO. So this is um, this is what I wanted to say uh, from the from Freya, and I hope um, that all of you either are already on the on the pit forum or will be excited to become new members. And with that, I would like to uh, give the floor to Todd and Alice. And unless there are already questions from people, somebody wants to ask something on the general uh, pit forum and how we establish this and use it in Freya, then I'm happy to hear that as well. If not, I'm going to stop sharing my screen and give the floor to you. All right. Hi, I'm just so mentioning that there session on the knowledge hub uh, friends as my colleague has mentioned there's a session on the knowledge hub and training materials tomorrow so if you're interested to hear more about that then you can join the session by Francis Madden and colleagues tomorrow okay um thank you Ricarda um and I think before we begin I think we should all, all uh, send our deepest thanks and appreciation to you uh, both for organizing the session, inviting us, uh, but also your role in, in getting the, the forum moving and running, as well as all of, as well as our thanks to all of the moderators and Freya generally for inviting us to speak today. So <clears throat> just a few minutes, uh, what we'd like to do is just kind of give you a little bit of background about NISO, a little bit of background about where we're headed, um, but really turn this over into a conversation. Uh, with all of you. Uh, Ricardo mentioned that there's some 500 members of the forum, and I guess uh, she called those PID enthusiasts. I guess you are the most enthusiastic of the PID enthusiasts for joining us here today. So uh, we really want to get your opinion, your thoughts about where we should head with the forum. Uh, and we want to take the last you know, 15 or so, 20 minutes of this conversation um, to have a conversation about the forum and, and where we can go with it. So let's start first with a little bit about NISO. Uh, I'm guessing most of you are aware, but maybe not all of you. Uh, NISO is the National Information Standards Organization. We're a US-based nonprofit organization that develops technical standards for publishers, libraries, and software providers, primarily in the scholarly and research space, but also you know, with extensions into trade publishing, into um, media, multimedia, various forms. We create standards, recommended practices. We do things beyond standards. We do host, we host schemas. We have a variety of educational events. We probably host you know, 30 or 40 educational events, primarily virtually every year. We also develop primers and other information resources for the community about technology for distributing information. Uh, as I mentioned, we're a nonprofit. Uh, we are a membership supported organization. We're focused on consensus. We're focused on the development of consensus. Um, and we, despite our name, National Information Standards, we operate both at a US national level, but also at a much higher international level, working with a variety of international organizations. About 30% of our members are actually based outside of the United States. And we have a vision of uh, a world that we can all benefit from the unfettered exchange of information. Um, as I said, I want to thank Freya, many thanks and kudos for creating the forum as a go-to resource for all things PID related. Uh, and also thank Freya for the, the selection of NISO in this activity. Um, extending that, uh, Freya has continued its subscription to the discourse platform. It's been paid through October of 2021. So many thanks to our friends at Freya for uh, simplifying the transition. So we don't expect any immediate technological change uh, planned for uh, either 
um, scrambling in the next two months before the end of the year or even into early 2021. Although we do plan to move off the hosted Discourse platform and move it to uh, NISO servers and run our own instance of Discourse. We actually use it for other things. Uh, so we will be transitioning Discourse uh, off of the hosted platform, but from the from the perspective of users, we don't expect that that's really going to um, impact you all. Um, but as I mentioned, what we want to do here, uh, as well as at uh, at Pitapalooza, is have a conversation about where we're headed. So, uh, with that, I want going to pass it over to Alice for a little bit of conversation about the forum, uh, the, the hosting, uh, the engagement, and some of the near-term plans that we have, as well as to kick off the conversation that we hope to have. So off to you, Alice. Well done. Hi, everyone. It's really nice to see all of you in some familiar faces. <clears throat> and I am going to echo Todd, first of all, to say a big thank you to the current PID Forum moderators and particularly Ricarda for all your work. I actually have been a, a PID Forum moderator and I want to just make sure everybody's clear that I was in no way involved in the decision making process around this. Um, but obviously very delighted that um, that that we will be um, hosting the PID Forum going forward. Um, but this has been a great group of people to work with. And part of the reason for highlighting this is that I think we had quite a nice diversity of moderators, but obviously there was a focus um, with this being an EU funded project um, on EU organizations, not entirely, but um, I think one of the things that we would really like to make the PID Forum is more global, more, more, more truly inclusive and international. So one of the things that I would love your thoughts on is who else should be involved and whether you can help, whether that's as a moderator yourself or um, by, by suggesting others. So for example, I think as well as being more international, it would be great to bring in, potentially bring in more um, uh, different sorts of PID providers. Um, again, at the moment, we're probably a little bit narrower than perhaps we could be. So one of the um, main things that we want to be thinking about and that we want your help with is how we can expand and um, make the PID forum more diverse and inclusive. Next slide, please. Sorry, sorry, Alice. That's right. I, yeah, I'm running the slides for you. <laughs> um, <laughs> So uh, continuing the engagement that um, Freya and, and Ricardo in particular have really been working on, this is going to be our number one thing, obviously, um, and um, as Director of Community Engagement, it's something that I'm very excited about and it fits very well with the other work that I'm doing in this area. So as I say, establishing an expanded group of global moderators is, is I think, one of our top priorities and making sure that we um, have a wider representation in terms of PIDs as well as geographies and, and also sort of organizations and organization types. Um, so really thinking about that will be very important. And we do want to get your input and the wider community input on what you want the FID, PID forum to be, as Todd says. So we have a few opportunities for you to tell us what you think. Um, we have a proposal for a PIDapalooza session, which will be, if accepted, will be very much about um, getting people into a virtual room to help us brainstorm what's been working well. <clears throat> anything that perhaps hasn't been working as well, what you'd like to see in the future, um, and just um, uh, gauge levels of, of um, interest and engagement across the community. Um, we're also going to do um, some survey and polling on the PID forum among users. As Ricardo said, there's well over 500 of them already, which is fantastic. So um, that gives us a nice pool of people to share um, existing experiences and feedback. And we're planning to create a Twitter account and can also sort of invite some ideas there and also hopefully get a, um, a sense of the level of engagement there. We'd also like to do some analysis of the current PID forum usage and engagement, who's using it, what sort of length of time people are staying on it, what sorts of things people are using, what are the areas that are most used. One of the things, as Ricardo says, that we know is being well used is the Knowledge Hub, and that's something that we absolutely are committed to um, retaining and expanding. But beyond that, I think there are other opportunities as well, um, and that's where we want to hear from everybody. And then once we've got all this information, we'll develop and sort of fully implement an engagement plan. We had some ideas that we shared in our proposal, um, but we really want to um, find out more from the community and dive a bit deeper before we come up with a, with a sort of a formal plan. And obviously we want to hear from you from that. 
So I think the next couple of slides are an opportunity for you to tell us what, um, what you'd like. Um, so we've got a couple of mentee um, uh, polls for you to take. Um, so the first one, one is, what do you want the PID forum to be? And we have a few suggestions here, an open discussion forum for PID questions and challenges, a place where the PID community can collaborate and coordinate, a space for technical PID discussions, uh, possibly a home for the, the sort of, we're not there yet, but hopefully coming at some point PID Federation community or something else. Um, so if you could take a minute to go to menti.com and use this code 9801853, you can select as many options as you wish this time around. And if you have um, some, chosen something else, there should be the opportunity for you to write a few words um, uh, of what you're thinking there as well. So I'm gonna give you a minute or two to do that. Then we have one other question. I'm going to wrap up my presentation and then we'll go back and look at the results after that to hopefully Just kick to off mention the that the, the free fill part is only at the event. If you have um, sort of free, free ideas, you need to do the two questions and then, and then you, can, you can get to, the, to ah. the point where you can add your own thoughts. Thank you. And you can also, you're also welcome to add your ideas in the chat or to raise them in the discussion afterwards as well, obviously. So Ricardo, you want me to you... run through the next question or? Uh, sure, yes, I was just gonna say, I'm not sure how people are doing on answering, so. Uh, I need to mute myself there. Uh, we have about eight responses yet. Okay. So I think we can give it a little bit more time. And if you want me to share them, just let me know. Yeah, thank you. We'll... So give me another 20 seconds or so on that and then we'll move on to the next question. Okay. So let's move on to the next question. Um, and this is about what you think um, our top priority should be. And this one, you can just answer, you can just select one option because um, otherwise we, you will have lots of top priorities. So again, we thought a few options. One is encouraging more non-English language participation. And this was something that we've been experimenting a bit with on the forum this year, following a conversation at um, Pitapalooza 2020, when that was raised as a potential way of getting more engagement. So that would be one thing. Improving the UX, the user experience would be another. So the, um, it, uh, the interface. Um, inviting participation from a wider range of PID providers and talked a little bit about that already. Maybe becoming more closely integrated, involved with Pidapalooza in some way. Ricardo mentioned that um, at least for 2020, the Pidapalooza group used the forum as a, as a, a place to have um, discussions. I think that hasn't happened as much this year, but I think there could be opportunities there. Or again, something else. So I'll give you a minute or two to, to answer this one. We have about 10 people in the Menti now, and uh, the results are interesting, so I'm looking forward to share them with you, but yes, thank <laughs> maybe you. not spoiling people. <laughs> <laughs> maybe so everybody can make their own choices. We'll keep it open for a little bit longer as well. As I say, I'll, I'll kind of wrap up um, the formal part of the presentation and then we'll go back, if that's okay, Ricardo, and look at the results and hopefully that will kick off some discussion. So maybe move on to the next slide, Todd. Thank you. So as I say, we, we, we're holding off on a sort of uh, uh, detailed plan until we know more from you about what you want, but we do have some next steps planned um, already, particularly in the, in the sort of short term. So um, as Ricardo mentioned, this is probably the first kind of public um, announcement, if you like, about the, the move to NISO, but we are planning a more formal official announcement um, which Ricardo and I will be working on over the next week or so. We're hoping to get that out next week if possible. Um, and that will be a post on the Freya blog. Um, we'll add it to our own newsletter. 
um, it will be published there right away and then um, uh, the newsletter itself goes out in early December. We're also going to put together a sort of more formal press release or announcement that will go out to various media contacts and obviously we'll be posting it on social media and so on as well. So look out, um, I think probably Tuesday next week is what we're aiming for. Um, we would really appreciate your help spreading the news in your communities as well. We also, obviously, it's really important we want to meet with um, all the current moderators. We're very much hoping that many of you will want to continue to be involved. That was definitely part of our pitch. And um, we, you've, you've, you've done a great job and we would really, really like, um, like you to continue to be involved if you can be, as well as um, expand, expanding the moderators to include others. So I think uh, we'll hope to meet with you in December and possibly again in January, depending on how things pan out. Um, and then once we've recruited some additional moderators, our, our thoughts are that we would like to schedule more regular meetings. I think we we sort of started off with maybe quarterly meetings or thereabout, and they've slightly fizzled as tends to happen at the end of a project when things are a bit uncertain. But we would like to get that back on a more sort of formal basis going forward as well. Um, also in January, we'd like to create um, a Twitter account for the PID forum that hasn't there hasn't been one so far, um, but there has been one for Freya. And I think the Freya one is going to kind of, again, die out a little bit because it's the end of the project. So we're hoping that there is a way to encourage um, people who currently follow Freya on Twitter to um, consider following the PID forum account instead, and then we'll start building that up. Um, of course, we also have Pidapalooza at the end of January, and hopefully you're all planning to attend. If not, um, it's completely free. It's a 24-hour PID party, um, virtual PID party, obviously. So it's in a time zone that um, will work for everyone. Um, and hopefully we'll have this opportunity there um, to, to um, if this proposal is accepted. But uh, even worst case scenario, scenario, it isn't. There will be lots of opportunities for us to talk to each other and network and think about the PID forum there, I think. Um, and then, as Todd mentioned, a bit sort of um, a bit further on in the year, we'll be looking to relaunch the PID forum on the NISO servers. But between now and then, we really want to get the community side of things up and running. We want to know what you want from us. We want to establish our expanded group of moderators, think about whether there are other ways that people can get more involved, look at who's using what and hopefully why now, what's working, what isn't, and um, develop and start implementing a longer term community engagement plan. So lots to do. We're very excited about it. And again, we really appreciate your support for the forum to date um, and your, and your um, hard work on it and look forward to working with you um, going forward. So I think without further ado, and just a drum roll of a little bit, uh, Ricarda, can we go to the, um, uh, the Menti results, please? Yes, let me kick you out of sharing. Stop sharing. <laughs> Let's see. Do you see the screen now with the pit form future? Yes. 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 Okay, perfect. Um, yeah. So we want to hear from you. Oh, let me see. There we go. This is the first. Oh. Oh. Okay. Well, this is interesting. Okay, good. So basically, the open discussion forum, the place for collaboration and coordination, and the space for technical pit discussions are all highly rated, not less sure about whether it could be a home for the PID Federation or, or whatever that um, morphs into. So that's really helpful. Thank you. And, and nobody at the moment has ideas for anything else. Um, if you do, we would love to hear them, but um, or at least not that you have added here. I haven't actually looked at the chat, so we should go and, and take a look at Maybe just to, to add, because I'm not sure everybody's familiar with the discussions around this PID Federation. So there will be actually a session about that tomorrow on the PID comments and the PID Federation and the work Freya has been doing on that. So if you uh, don't know what this was or uh, kind of how it could be a part, I would recommend you to join that session and learn more about it if you're interested. Great. Should I go to the next question? I think so. Yes, please. Oh, this is <laughs> this is a very loud and clear message. Um, so, and that's great because, um, as I started out saying, this is something we already we feel is a priority too. But um, getting more PID providers involved, so that will absolutely be our top priority, and that I think will fit very well with our goal of expanding the moderators as well. Um, so again, if you have specific ideas, whether it's for organizations or in particular individuals at organizations that you think would be 
good um, as moderators for the PID forum, I would really appreciate you um, letting me know. I'm going to just put my um, email address in the chat for those of you who don't have it, and you're very welcome to contact me um, directly. And I'm putting my email in there as well. Great. Well, that, that was definitely gave us the answer we wanted there. Um, so thank you, everybody. Um, and then I think now we're ready for we'd, we'd allow sort of 10 to 15 minutes for more general um, discussion. Yeah, and just, this is, so this is, I also put up the results of um, oh, where people could share oh, thank you, thank you. ideas. So um, there's quite a lot of things. So maybe yes. we can use this as a basis for the discussion. Yes, fantastic. Um, thank you. And there were some comments already also in the chat, which I think were also interesting, but I don't know, maybe we give people uh, just a minute to go through what is said here and So I saw one question, maybe if I can answer that already, which is what the link is with the Research Data Alliance PIT interest group and what the rationale was to establish a PIT forum besides the RDA, which I think is a very, very good question. And I think the link the link should be, should be um, close. And we also wanted to um, establish a very close link, but I think the, the forum offers just more ways of communicating with a, with a bit of a broader audience, whereas the PIT interest group is, I think, very relevant and there are lots of interesting discussions there. We saw that that there was sort of room for something else, a bit more of a, really more of a social forum in a way. And it also allowed us to share, for instance, the Knowledge Hub um, training materials and just a little bit more of informal connection next to the RDA. But I think maybe this is something for, for NISO also to think about how the PIT, PIT interest group can be, whether that, whether that should receive also some kind of special, special place, because we did indeed, um, it was something that we considered for Freya as well. So have there been any conversations with the um, PID interest group at all that you know of, Ricardo? Mm, uh, we haven't directly talked with them about the forum, but of course there, there was sort of interlinkage with, with what we've done in Freya because a lot of the Freya members are also part of the, the PID interest group. So right. in that sense, but not directly related to the PID forum. Right. Yeah, it, it's a small world. <laughs> It is a small word, yeah, exactly, yeah. Um, you know, I'll, I'll jump in here a little bit in terms of building better connections with, um, and you know, this obviously came through in, this, in the Menti survey, um, building better connections through the variety of PID conversations um, is something that Alice has been particularly keen on. I am particularly keen on how do we build the bridges between, uh, you know, someone mentioned use, the user community as well, uh, the users of PIDs and reaching out to the RDA and their PID IG is another, another avenue in that way. Uh, I think there's a lot that we can do there, uh, a lot of opportunity there. Uh, there was a question in the chat about integration of services. Uh, Ricardo, I'm gonna jump in there. Um, so there is another discourse by another Freya project um, and whether or not we can um, have cross searching across the various discourse platforms. Um, I don't know I, I, we haven't looked into what are the various functionalities on the existing um, hosted platform. Um, although I do know that Freya has one of the more robust of the, uh, the service levels. Um, we might be able to implement that prior to moving, but when we move to our own servers, we kind of have a lot of opportunity to do, implement whatever uh, open source search, uh, cross-platform search uh, we want. Uh, so that's certainly a possibility. Uh, but again, that's probably uh, third, fourth quarter of next year kind of activity. Uh, there isn't really a lot of point in making that technological change, if, especially if the 
uh, if Freya has already paid for the infrastructure, at least for a year, might as well take advantage of that. But we can line up and start exploring and start implementing some version of, you know, Elasticsearch and other um, other tools that we might add on and layer over the forum. So, you know, that's certainly within uh, the, the list of development priorities. So we can add that. I think that's, that's really nice. And I think there will be a lot of things um, that can be added since it's an open source. Yeah, since it's open source, I think there's, there's lots of possibilities. One of the things that I wanted to highlight was a question. I don't remember who now put it in the chat, but it's about uh, the relation to the EOSC because of course we are in an EOSC event and Freya is an EOSC project. So um, I think the question was along the lines, okay, but how how does the forum integrate with the EOSC? What are the plans there? And I think it, it's really worthwhile mentioning that this was also something we already discussed. Um, and I think it, 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 it's sort of, at least how I see it, I think it's probably similar for for an eye, so is that the EOS is definitely a group that should be um, should be using the forum, and we have seen that it actually works really well for for instance for the EOS pit policy that people can um, consult there. But the pit forum also is supposed to be a global platform, so I think there's a little bit of a I don't want to say there's a tension, but I think it was we explicitly wanted to create mm -hmm. something that is global because persistent identifiers are global, and I think also um, the EOS is a very important sort of infrastructure, but it's also very important to align with sort of RDA and other things that are out there. And um, I would hope that there would be a close collaboration with whatever is developed in EOSC and how the pit forum can be integrated there. So I think that, that it's, um, it's absolutely something that will become a bit more clear in the future. But I don't know if you, um, Todd or Alice, have some, some ideas about how, how this might work in the future. Well, sure. Um... A worldwide global um, forum, by definition, includes opportunities for European specific conversations, could be Asia Pacific uh, conversations, could be national specific conversations. Um, and all of those are appropriate um, discussions to have. And, you know, there are existing con conversation threads within the forum. And we absolutely want to continue those. And if there is enough people who want to uh, have a specific conversation around uh, EOSC projects or EOSC activities and how uh, persistent identifiers relate to that, uh, then absolutely uh, have at it. <laughs> um, you know, I'm sure there will be moderators from the community, from the EOS community, who will continue to participate in the forum. Uh, I hope. Um, I will. I will be very disappointed if there isn't. Um, so, uh, you know, by all means, uh, we want to not dismiss any of the conversations or any of the community members that have been part of the conversation to this point. What we want to do is just expand the conversations. So we don't want to diminish any of the conversations that are taking place. In fact, we want to encourage there to be more of them. Yeah, I think it's that whole thing of we, you know, it's, it's the, the broader you can make those conversations and the less siloed, the better it is for everyone. So there's a place, as you say, Todd, for the sort of, um, you know, whether it's PID specific or geography specific or language specific or whatever it might be, there's certainly a place for those conversations. But I think the <clears throat> value of the PID forum is that it is a collective umbrella for all those things. So none of them are sort of siphoned off on their own. They're part of this larger, larger entity. Um, I, I wanted to, uh, if I may, pull out a couple of the comments from the mentee. Um, one of them is a place to find PID experts, which I think kind of um, is already happening kind of organically in that, you know, you can ask questions and people will jump in and answer them. But I would be interested to hear from either whoever suggested that or anybody else who, who has a view on it. Um, were you thinking that this could be more like a you know, more than just a sort of uh, fairly informal Q&A sort of thing, were you thinking that it would be good to identify who specific experts, individual experts are within the PID forum or, um, or, or by individual persistent identifier? I, 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 I'm 
quite intrigued by this idea and there are, I think there are lots of different ways you could go with it. Um, so if you have um, views on that, I'd be really interested to hear them. And I would just want to add that people can uh, unmute themselves and just comment because I think we are a relatively mm -hmm. small group and it would be really nice if people can just um, do that. So in a meeting, you can unmute yourself and, and um, if you want to come out as the person who put this in, of course. <laughs> And if not, email me afterwards and tell me what you were thinking. Okay, nobody's going to confess. Well, I think that's an intriguing idea and I'm going to add it to my own list of things to think about. So um, it, was, it wasn't me, but if I can answer your question, at least from my perspective, I, th I don't think it's a good idea to identify experts. Because if I look at the discussion on the PIT forum, everyone has different expertise and is contributing that expertise. So it could also get in the way of having active discussions if you're going to name particular people as the experts and other people are then not the experts if everyone has expertise that they can contribute. Yeah, I think, I think that's a really good point, Elena. I mean, I guess where I was partly thinking was not when I said there's lots of different ways you could take this, for example, one would be with my own personal hat on. There are some fantastic community outreach people, um, PID community outreach people on the forum. And, you know, are there sort of different ways we could think about what constitutes an expert and how to find them and how to ask some questions? And maybe it is just a maybe it's just a matter of, you know, tagging and whoever sees it jumping in. I, I'm, I'm not averse to that either, but I think... Um, I, I would see the PID forum as a place where PID experts on various aspects of PIDs uh, can congregate <laughs> um, and therefore finding ways for people to identify or, or, or to avail themselves of those experts in the easiest possible way I think would be good and as I say maybe it's happening just fine already but but I feel like maybe that's something we could think a little bit differently about maybe yeah I mean I, I guess there are probably more subtle ways of doing it than just saying these people are the experts um yeah I which could... <laughs> a label, a, the label is probably wrong you're right <laughs> wow. um, I think it's important I think it would be important to distinguish there are different types of expertise um in different domains in different areas uh, that are all relevant uh, when it comes to PIDs. Uh, there are people who are expert in metadata. There are ex experts in the technical infrastructure and the APIs and the, the data integrations and JSON. Um, there are people involved in outreach and engagement, which is also critical. Uh, you know, some of the some of the organizations have done amazing work in terms of ambassadors and outreach and getting the community involved. All of these are elements to successfully running out, you know, deploying a PID infrastructure. Uh, so I wouldn't, I think it's wrong to say, you know, so-and-so is an expert uh, because there are so many elements of this that need expertise. And just because you're an expert in writing uh, JSON does not mean that you are an expert in uh, building an uh, international uh, com user community. Uh, both are critical to success. Agreed. Just having a look at the time, I think it's almost quarter two when our session was supposed to end. So I don't know if we, if you wanted to pick out something else um, or if somebody else who is here wants to add something that hasn't been discussed yet. Um, there will be, as you already saw in Alice overview, a lot of uh, possibilities to interact with, uh, with the PIT forum, with us um, as the community and as the current and future moderators who will be driving this. So I hope to see many of you at, at next event. Um, Todd, Alice, is there something you wanted to still say from or take from the thoughts or questions? Alice? No, I was just gonna say, if you could share the um, feedback, this this sort of individual bit of feedback with us so that we don't lose sight of it, Ricardo, that would be great and really appreciate everybody taking the time to, to 
share your thoughts with us and as I say really hope that you'll continue to be involved and engaged with the PID forum going forward we're very excited yeah and and just from my perspective I want to reiterate that and again thank uh, Freya for all of its work and you know I hope that you know PID forum version 2.0 uh, will be uh, will build be able to build on your successes uh, and you know I I say this a lot, uh, but this is particularly true of the forum, that it's only as strong as the participation of the people who are on the on the call, and the people who've engaged in the forum already, and that's the real enthusiasm. Um, you know, if it's just Alice and me and a you know Nettie and a few of the other NISO staff, the conversation will get dull very quickly. Um, so we hope that you all continue to be engaged and we hope that you uh, uh, share your thoughts and ideas as you have done. And you know, we'll do everything we can to make this a, a great experience for everyone moving forward. I think this is a very nice closing statement. So I think with this, we can close the session. I would like to thank everybody for being here, Todd and Alice for taking the time and for the presentations. And uh, yeah, this will be made available also. And there's a Zenodo page from the conference where we'll share the slides and the video recordings will also be made available of the session if anybody wants to uh, rewatch what we discussed today. So thank you all and enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you. Thank you. See you tomorrow in thank the you. Um, thank generation you. meeting. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Bye.